In this video, I'll be answering questions submitted by PaintShop Pro users on a variety of topics. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this QA session and submit your own questions to be answered in future videos. Our first question is, I want to center an object inside an area. How do I do this? The Objects menu is where to look for alignment options. In this example, I've added a text vector object to this photo. To center the text within the photo, I'll select the text with the Pick tool and open the Objects Align menu. I can center it vertically, then horizontally, or I could have used Center in Canvas. If you want to align an object to another object, rather than align it to the entire canvas, both objects need to be selected. I'll unhide this layer that has a rectangle, and I want to center the text within this rectangle. I need to select both objects, keeping in mind that the first object I select won't move, and any objects I select after this will move to align with the first. So with the Pick tool, I'll select the rectangle, then press Shift and select the text. The Align options are also in the Context menu, which opens when I right-click. I'll choose Align Vertical Center, then Align Horizontal Center. In the Materials palette, it's easy to assign foreground and background colors by using swatches or HSL maps. But how do I set a background color using the sliders? There are three ways to select colors in the Materials palette. With the palettes, when I left-click a swatch color, that sets the foreground color, and a right-click sets the background. The second method is HSL Maps. With this method, it's best to set the background color first by right-clicking, because when I choose a new hue, the foreground color changes. Now I can left-click to set the foreground color. The third method is sliders, but the color produced by the sliders only goes to the foreground. One workaround is to use the sliders to get your background color, click Swap Materials to move that color from foreground to background, then set the foreground color. Or you can click the background swatch to open the Material Properties window, adjust the sliders on the Color tab, then click OK. Can you include a short demo on how to use textures in the Materials palette? Textures are pretty easy to apply. Any filled shape or text has both an outline color, which is the foreground swatch, and a fill color, which is the background swatch. I'll add a text object to this photo, which is filled with the solid background color. To add textures to the background, I'll select the text, then enable the texture icon below the swatch. The most recently used texture is applied to the background color, and parts of the text fill are now translucent. To change the texture, I'll select the text again, click the background swatch, and in the Material Properties window, I'll click the Texture tab. The current texture is Blue Spruce, and all of the pre-installed texture images are grayscale. I'll switch to a crumpled paper texture, which is mostly white and light gray, and I can change the angle or scale. When I click OK to apply this new texture, much more of the background color appears, because it's the darker areas of a texture image that become translucent or transparent, and the texture I just applied is mostly light shades. If I switch to a darker texture image, more of the photo below the text shows through. Note that if I change the background color by right-clicking on a swatch, the texture disappears, and I would have to reapply it. You can save your own image as a texture. A texture doesn't have to be a grayscale image, but it will be treated as a grayscale image when used as a texture. To make this image into a texture, I'll use File, Save As, save it as a bitmap, and place it in Documents, Corel PaintShop Pro, Version Number, Textures. Now I'll create an ellipse in this image, select it, and when I look for textures to apply, I can find the one I just saved. I can even combine textures with patterns. I'll click the background swatch again, open the patterns, and apply this pink swirly pattern. How do I change a brown roof to black in a photo? I'll show my roof example in a bit, but there are a few different methods for changing the color of an object or area, and the best method depends on your photo. 
For example, I can use the Color Changer tool to change this pink balloon to the blue foreground color with just one click. There were no other pink pixels in the photo, so nothing else changed. Now take this photo of a house with a brown roof, which I'll change to red since that will be more dramatic than changing it to black. There are lots of brown pixels throughout this photo, so when I use the color changer, the roof and lots of other things are all changed to red. Even if I undo and lower the tolerance, I still get too much red. So for a case like this, it's best to start by selecting the area where you want to make changes. I'll activate the Smart Selection brush, and with the small brush size and low tolerance, I'll carefully outline the roof. With the mode set to Add, I can include any bits I want that were left out. Now I can go back to the Color Changer, bump up the tolerance so that the whole roof will be included, and color the roof with one click. I'm having a hard time removing the sky in a photo and replacing it with another sky. I know it involves layers and selections, but I'd like to see the process step by step. This is a question that comes up a lot, and yes, layers and selections are involved. I have this photo of a cabin with a dark and gloomy sky, and this photo with a brighter sky. I want the bright sky photo to become the background layer for the darker image. So with the bright sky photo selected, I'll click and drag its layer right onto the dark photo. For another way to do the same thing, I only have the cabin photo open, and I can find the bright sky photo in the organizer. I'll drag from the organizer directly into the layers palette of the cabin image. The cabin is now covered by the new layer. I want to switch the layer order so that the bright sky becomes the new background. But while the cabin image is the background, I can't move another layer below it. So first I'll right click on the background layer and promote it. Now it's a regular raster layer and I can drag it up above the brighter layer. The next step is to remove the gloomy sky, which will uncover the brighter sky below. Because the edits need to be done to the darker image, that layer needs to stay active. I'll demonstrate two methods for removing the sky. First, I'll use the background eraser with a large brush size, maximum hardness, full opacity, high tolerance, and continuous sampling. With these settings, I can remove almost all of the dark sky, not touching the border areas. Now I'll shrink the brush and drop the tolerance. The continuous color sampling is done at the point where the black eraser tip is, so I'm being careful to always keep that tip within the sky. Here's my final result, and on the cabin layer I can see what's been erased. The second method uses a selection to mask the area to erase. The Smart Selection brush is great for selecting parts of an image along color borders. I'll trace around to grab all of the sky, and because I've selected a bit too much, I'll switch to Remove mode and use a smaller brush to unselect these shadowy hills. Now all I have to do is press the Delete key to remove what's selected. And I'll press Ctrl D to unselect everything. This brings us to the end of our PaintShop Pro Q&A session. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below, which will take you to this tutorial page in Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll also find a written version of this tutorial, and you can submit your own questions to be answered in future videos.